your dad Ooh, 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 ooh,
that oh my it, it just wasn't get, I just didn't give it a good opportunity to be tested well. So I can't wait till, uh, kingfish season over here and try it out again or the next chance, next time I get a chance to get over to offshore east coast to try them out. Well, we're going to have a, we've got a lineup, uh, just like every show. Uh, you know, the last show that we did was a very unique and very special show. That's not normally what we do, but I thought that very important to try to get that information out to the people who, to the listeners. And I know some, there's quite a few of you who listen here and not here in Florida. And you say, well, they're not really that interested in that Riscala because that's not happening here. And I understand that, but please understand that whatever happens here can happen anywhere else. So if they're taking advantage of us here and they're, not being responsible with our water here. Just remember that can happen anywhere else. It's happening um, in Wisconsin, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not Wisconsin, Flint, Michigan. Uh, so it's one of those things. That's the whole reason I did what I did. I felt it very important to bring that subject up to get as much information out there. Hopefully, those of you on the other side of the microphone had enough information that when you went to the polls, you uh, voted for somebody that will help us. Get out of this nightmare. This is a nightmare for people. Uh, 140 miles of our coastline devastated. So anyway, um, I'm looking for Robert. Anyway, Robert, we'll, we'll from, from I can't even talk this morning. Get my tongue straight. Robert with the uh, Florida Fisherman Magazine will be on shortly, and then uh, as I mentioned earlier, Peter Camarano will be on. He's a um, former veteran. Uh, he's a cancer victor. I don't recall. I don't call cancer survivors. I call them cancer victors. Uh, he's also uh, makes handmade lures, which I mentioned earlier. And then I'm going to have um, J. Lucas Lamar. J. 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 Lucas is a very unique individual, and the story that he has will be, I hope for you, on the other side of the microphone, be very, very interesting. And we're going to have uh, Lisa Fitzgerald on. Lisa's with the CCA Florida Star Tournament. Uh, she's going to give us an update as to what's going on and some things that uh, some some good news from what I spoke uh, her to to her about. Uh, some things that uh, kind of give us some hope uh, with regard to the subject I mentioned earlier with all this devastation. And then um, at the very end, we'll have Mike Simcoe. Mike Simcoe, uh, of course, is with kitefishing.com. Um, Mike Simcoe has uh, been um, generous enough to share his time with us several times <clears throat> uh, in the past. I always thought kite fishing was a kind of a simple thing, but I've come to find out, you know, it's what I love about doing this show. I don't pretend to be professional and know everything. I just love fishing, all all aspects of fishing, and I've come to find out that kite fishing is not quite so simple. <laughs> it can be quite sophisticated, or you can just have a simple kite out there. So you'll be able to um, kind of clarify that for us as well. Um, how are we looking over there, by the way? Over here, I'm looking at, it's getting darker as the minute goes by. I came across the uh, bay, uh, and it was beautiful. Almost pulled off 4th wow. Street, came, it had to swerve the car over to stay on to get off at the next exit. <laughs> and my, <laughs> and, and my boat, my kayak is attached to the car. <laughs> so, uh, wow. everybody out there, if you're well, in Tampa Bay, you will see me on the water within 15 minutes of this program ending. <laughs> my goodness. Now, it, it well, looked, you know, it nice. I, I think, I think the, um, The other, gosh, here comes Pam. Get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> we we lost you a little bit on that. Yeah. All I heard was well, Pam, get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've got Robert on. Good, do we have Robert on? Yes, we do. Good morning. Hey, there he is. Good morning, Robert. The one and only Robert Wagner. Rob, Robert, listen to me, Robert Wagner. I just made you Ooh, um, very star. famous. Hello. <laughs> yeah, no, not in a good way. I don't. Yeah, think. I was going to say, be careful if you're on a boat with him. Then <laughs> let's try yeah. that again. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to go on a boat with me anymore now. <laughs> Especially if you're a lady. Let me correct my my mistake. I will remove my right foot and insert both feet. Robert Warner with the Florida. Good morning. Company. Good morning. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great, great. Um, I'm sure everybody saw the FWC has posted a temporary uh, catch and release only on snook and redfish from Anna Marie Island all the way down through Collier County. Hallelujah! I wish they had uh, moved it a little yeah. further north. I mean, it's gonna that, everybody from that area is gonna hit Tampa Bay, and our snook are back. I mean, we not like they used to be, but there's snook out there. Redfish are really, really hard to find. 
I mean, they're out yep. there, but not and, like uh, they were three years ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm glad they did something, though. Yeah. So, uh, they're catch and release only. Please, everybody, go by the rules. Um, Pam can probably tell you more about what's going on over there on the West Coast with these, but I did see that uh, there are some tarpon being caught and released. <laughs> uh, thank God. Out of Boca Grande. Nice. Um, so they, their fish came back. At least some of them came back. Um, you know, so, and there's some really nice grouper being caught out of Crystal River. Uh, I got some pictures from Dan Clymer from, uh, Crystal River Fishing yesterday that there are definitely some gag groupers out there. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my. Good eating. Yeah. Yo, oh, yeah, they are. And as far as if anybody's still looking for Mahi, uh, Donald DeLeon sent me some pictures from Isla Mirada yesterday. He and uh, three of his friends were out. Uh, total of 23 fish, uh, mahi and, uh, blackfin tuna. Wow. Nice. So, you know, there's, there's lots of fish to be caught out there. So depending on what you're looking for, figure it out and head for where you need to be. So there you go. There you go. Just, be, re- of, just be respectful. Lots of fish to be caught, but the, you got to take the first step. Yep. Yep. The first, the first step is get your behind out there. <laughs> That's right. Now, I did see that. I also watch the weather every morning, and, and tomorrow's not going to be a real good day for a lot of people. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we mentioned that but a little it's earlier. A good day to change your good day to change the line on your reels. Exactly. Good day to uh, you know organize your tackle box, get ready for next week, and uh, you know, so. that's you know I was that's exactly what I was going to mention. Now that football's <laughs> back, yay! Thank you. We've got football season back. That's one of my favorite things to do in front of a game. I'll get all my lures out, you know, I'll wash them in the sink, get them nice and clean, and change out hooks uh-huh. and change out leaders on, on, you know, on my rods. It's an awesome rainy day project. And I'm sure your local tackle shops, especially those on the West Coast, would appreciate seeing you drop by. Oh, yeah. They always want to see you drop by. And, and try to try to support your local businesses as well. Uh, here on, on my side of the state, if you're, if you're looking around, White's Tackle is a great place. Uh, they're privately owned. They've got two locations, one in Fort Pierce, one in Stewart. Great bunch of people. Uh, check them out. So. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm totally in support of small businesses. That's one of the main reasons I'm having Peter come back on, Peter Camerano. Uh, small individually owned business locally. Um, I'm I'm a 100% supporter of any of that stuff. Yeah, I have. Well, local knowledge is is irreplaceable. Um, I mean, you can go to all of these other big stores and all of that. They normally don't have the local knowledge that these these smaller guys have. Mm -hmm. Uh, They can't tell you exactly what lures are working this week. They can't tell you, you know, exactly where they were. You know, these a lot of these smaller tackle shops really have this stuff pinpointed because they are local. You know, they're not uh, a national chain. Right. They know what's going on in your specific area, so please, exactly. if you yep. if you've got a few minutes, go in, check it out, talk to the folks. It's also a great place to to sit and talk to other fishermen. They're normally there. Yep. <laughs> so. I jokingly, I'm at Tampa Fishing Outfitters that has is which is locally owned and has um, two other stores up. But I joke around sometimes. I, I told Joy, I said we should just bring in rocking chairs, you know, and just sit and chat. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, our lures, the local tackle shows, their tackle that they bring in is particular for that area. I mean, you can use something totally different up in Homosassa than you're going to use in the waters in Tampa Bay, and they work differently. Absolutely. Good point. And a lot of times, even, even the same lure is worked in a different manner depending on where you are because of the, the, the bottom of – Mm-hmm. And and water conditions and and other things, so right. they can give you that information. So. Good point. Good point. Hey, uh, Robert, are you? Um, I think you're north of me. Are you north of me? Or are you? Because I remember you said no, you're I'm north of you. I'm in I'm in Stewart. So okay, uh, you're dead. Yep. I was just wondering. So I'm, I, I'm I remember, north of you. I remember you saying you were going to take a trip down to Keys. I didn't know how long it was going to last. So it would have been nice if you're still down there. I'm sure. Well, I did that. That was that was a couple of weeks ago. And it was a great time, but, uh, we're headed back down to shoot a video on, uh, October the 12th with Amanda Gilbert and, oh, really? uh, and some other folks. Nice. When is it going to air? 
Um, not sure because it takes a while to get them shot, then get them edited, and then get them out. So yeah, yeah. Never really Never know. Mind. I'll I'll let you know as, as Sundays go by. I will let you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. It I, takes I'd a like... while to get those things finished. So. That that's something that I'm slowly working on on this end. We we are eventually, I believe, we are going to go simulcast where we will be. You will have video, audio, and video as well as radio. I've got a couple of tech, technical things I have to work through, but eventually we'll be doing that as well. And um, <laughs> I'm hoping the guys at the other end can edit a little bit, do a little bit of editing for me because uh, uh, you know I get up first thing in the morning. It's not the I don't look my best first thing in the morning. Um, <laughs> Pam, Pam's laughing because she's been here. <laughs> yeah, I warned him he can't wear his, his PJs. Look who, I, 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 that means I have to put makeup on. Yeah. That's a whole girl thing. I, I'm sure we all look terrific right now. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the joys, you know, they tell me I have a face for radio. Rascala, <laughs> you have a face for radio. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do I. And, and this works out just perfect because it doesn't, Nobody has any idea what I'm doing and where I'm sitting and what I'm wearing. So this is perfect for me. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll, I'll, we'll have to kiss all of that goodbye when we start showing everybody what we're doing at this end. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to hire a couple TV editors. Those guys. There you go. That, no, I'll just get, no, I'll no, just those get guys, somebody else to sit in the chair and I'll talk. So. <laughs> yeah. You'll do what they call voiceover. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe, There'll just be a still do, picture but, uh, of a person sitting in a chair. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say get a still picture of somebody fishing, and that'll be the whole the picture for the whole show. You know, somebody dressed real nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll so, get so them all dressed up. Have you been doing any and, and, and out in her kayak, and, and and she'll be the picture. So there you go, hiding behind my big hat and my big oversized sunglasses and my buff. You won't see anything. Mm-hmm. But have Perfect. you been fishing over there? Yeah. What's that, Robert? Have you been doing some fishing over there? Uh, not a lot. I was working on the magazine until it came out next week and uh, or last week, and uh, I haven't had a chance yet. But I will as soon as this uh, little bit of weather comes past. I'm going to try to get out Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, what kind of articles gone, do you have? So. Can you give me a kind of a synopsis of one or two <laughs> articles you've got in the mag? Uh, there's a, a great article article on Yacinda Rose. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know Yacinda. Mm-hmm. She's a a big kayaker. Mm-hmm. There's a great article on her in there. I also, um, my friends from uh, New Orleans sent me Cajun Life Alaska. Um, <laughs> uh, the uh, Captain uh, Bourgeois and his wife, Janae, uh-huh. uh, Ginger Janae, went to Alaska and sent me a bunch of stuff from Alaska. And they called it Cajun Life Alaska. So, <laughs> wow. It, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, there's some great uh, video in there. Um, if you want to hear somebody from New Orleans talking to someone from Alaska about two different planets <laughs> entirely, um, it's, it's, it's pretty good stuff. Um, there's also an article on, um, let's see, who else is in there? Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, Anna, Anna Lee's in there. Um, she is a race car driver turned fisherman. Cool. Um, and um, there's a great article on her explains her childhood and growing up and um, how she started fishing and how she started driving race cars. And um, Valentine Thomas is in there, who is a, that's a phenomenal story. If you do not know the story of Valentine Thomas, you need to, to read that story. This is a girl who almost drowned when she was 13 years old and is now a world record free drive. Free diver, so wow! Isn't that um, amazing? It has, somebody goes through an experience like that, and they come out the other side. I, 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 that just amazes me. Wow! Well, one of the the first video in there of her. There's three videos I put on the last page of her article, and the first one is a TED talk on her mm-hmm. um, explaining her entire story and and how liberating it is to conquer these fears. So, oh, my goodness. Um, how can people look up your, how can they get a hold of your magazine? They just go to flfishmag.com. The cover will come up. Just click the cover and it opens the magazine. Okay. Can you say it again? flfishmag.com. flfishmag.com. And if you just click on the cover, it opens. Okay. 
good, good, good stuff. Robert, so there's a also pleasure. local fishing reports in there and some other stuff. I hope you guys have a wonderful day out there. I know you're probably up against the break, but yeah, we're up uh, against them. Robert, thank you so much. It's Robert Warner, Robert Warner, <laughs> not yeah, Robert Wagner, not Natalie Robert Wood's Warner. husband. No, it's, a, it's, uh, it's okay to get on a boat with me. It's safe. I promise you. So. <laughs> oh, we shouldn't be. Well, God bless at that. you, Robert. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay, folks, you we got to take a break. Please don't go away. We will be right back. It's the Fish You're Florida Show. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well, then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 9600. Hi, folks. I'm Roger from Roger's Got Your Motoring. If you need a local auto repair shop, Roger's Got Your Motoring will take care of all of your automotive repair needs. If you need something as simple as an oil change or as complex as an engine overhaul, I have the latest in technology and the knowledge to get the job done right. We've been servicing Pinellas County since 1994 and are conveniently located at 3700 Fifth Avenue North in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need service, call now at 727-327-1830 or visit my website at www.rogersgotchamotoring.com or like my Facebook page at Rogers Gotcha Motoring for a complete list of all of our services. So come on over to Rogers, that's me, and get your car service today. And don't forget to shop and support local business. Call now to book your appointment at 727-327-1830. That's 727-327-1830, or swing on by. K Possum Mexican Cantina is where friends and neighbors come to connect, share, and celebrate one another in a festive, casual atmosphere. Offering rich, robust flavors of authentic Mexican cuisine, we use only the freshest, finest ingredients. We chop and dice, season and blend, and then cook everything we serve to perfection. One thing that makes Mexican food even better is one of our delicious Best of the Bay margaritas. Our signature series of margarita flavors range from our sweet and fruity mango and strawberry to our hot and juicy jalapeno margarita. Having a busy meeting, or getting together and looking for Mexican food? Try our Fast Facts form. It's an easy, fast way to order your favorite Mexican food. We have special platters and layouts for any occasion. The form is super easy to fill out, fax, email, or just call it in. Whether it's here in the restaurant, in your home or office, at k Pasa, we celebrate bringing people together. k Pasa Mexican Cantina, 10478 Roosevelt Boulevard, North Street, in the Gateway Shopping Center, 727-330-3663 in St. Petersburg. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Riscola Stevens. And a very good morning to you if you're just joining us. It is the Fish Florida Show, and uh, I have with me, the, of course, the one and only Pam Worth, who is one of the top female kayak anglers here in Florida. Good morning, Miss Pam. Bring me along today. <laughs> and uh, along with Pam, we have uh, the one and only Captain Hook. Good morning, Captain Hook, and thank you for what you do, sir. Good morning. Good morning to all. 
hope everybody gets out and does a little fishing today before the weather goes to you know what. Well, we've got uh, liquid sunshine. You know, they they talk about it's raining cats and dogs. Right now, it has surpassed cats and dogs. We are on to mooses and cows. We are really <laughs> raining. Well, I'm glad I didn't come down there. I'm glad I stayed over here today. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's, I'm sure as quickly as it started, is it going to be as quickly as it stops. So um I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> anyway, it kind of cools things down because we start off in the morning here in South Florida. Uh, we, you know, we have two, I, I tell people we have two seasons in Florida. We have hot and hotter. Right now we're hotter and uh, because of the liquid sunshine, we're just down to hot. So <laughs> we're doing good. We're, do- <laughs> we're doing pretty good. So anyway, my next guest, uh, Peter Camerano. Peter is a veteran. Thank you for your service, my friend. He's also a uh, manufacturer of handmade lures. And uh, one of Peter's customers is Mike Simcoe, who will be on later today on the show. And um, Mike has shared with us how successful he's been with um, his kite fishing. And I'm sure that some of that kite fishing has been using some of Peter's lures. So good morning, Peter. And thank you for taking the time to call in, my friend. Well, good morning. How is everybody today? Very good. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Pam, I'm glad you're here. Yes, um, sir. What I wanted to, to spend a few minutes on is to, and I, I know this subject has been brought up in the past, but what I see from my from my position of women in the field of sport fishing, um, I want to start with you, all right? Last, what, a week or so ago, uh-huh. we met at, um, at a marine market and, uh, you, we discussed whether or not what I did could be adapted, uh, for your use in a kayak mm-hmm. fishing offshore. Right? <laughs> now, not familiar with that, but let me sort of paint a picture here. Right? The kayak is what, uh, approximately 15 feet long? Uh, mine's 13. All right, 13. All right. Now, you launch from the beach, correct? Yes, sir. No triple axle loadmaster trailer being pulled by a (laughs) heavy-duty pickup truck. No. We're not talking about a 36-foot contender uh, CV uh, pushed by three 350 uh, outboards. No, it's one people power. what (laughs) what, what What was the sea state? Uh, during that tournament when you launched? Um, I'm thinking it was getting pretty close to, uh, small craft warnings. <laughs> all right. Now, picture this. Picture this, if you will. All right. <clears throat> Being launched from the beach, 13 foot kayak, going tournament fishing. All right. I want to set up a quick scenario here. I believe the current was somewhere in the four to five knot range. You are correct, that sir. Day. All right. So now, if you go with the if you go with the current, within one hour, you're sit without doing anything. You are four to five miles away from your starting point. To get back, to get back, you're not just going to hit the throttles on those three fifties. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to start paddling. But first, you have to overcome the current of the four, four to five knots, which means just to stay still. That's the rate you have to go to. Get back where you're going within an hour. You have to then be a plus five over the current. I don't know many people that can do that. All right. Now, coming back, coming back. Did you not uh, flip over? Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. The, no, no. Did, 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 how far offshore were you? About 300 yards. Okay. Now, let's picture this. Almost small craft warning. 13 foot kayak rolled over, all right, 900 feet um, uh, offshore. Right the craft and come back in. Now, a little bit out of the ordinary, I don't care, male, female, or what, you, it's, what you showed was courage, strength, coolness underneath pressure in order to, to, to go ahead and do that. And, successfully back on shore again. All right. Now, there we have an, a good example of a, of a female, a lady in competition. Now, we have over here in Jupiter, 
Her name is Summer Warren. Summer is the director of a tournament called Chasing Tales. It's a, a Kingfish Dolphin Oahu a, a tournament. Five years ago, the first tournament was started. This year, now it's it's another couple of weeks before the tournament. Already at a hundred and forty boats in five years. Nice. That wow. places her. You no, know, that places her. Right. You have on the east coast now of Florida, Jacksonville Open two fifty, um, the um, West Palm Beach Fishing Club Classic. That's another two fifty boats there. Uh, Big Dog Fat Cat out of uh, Sailfish Marina, uh, the Palm Beach area. Um, the last one in July, 242 boats. Now, then here comes summer. Five years, she is at 150 boats plus. Now, there's a story behind her that makes it very interesting. She and her husband lost a child, a very young child, to a rare disease. She now devotes her time to raising money for medical research and to help the families whose children are going through these traumatic times. It's a 24 hour, 12, 365 day a year commitment to doing impact, impacting um, the local community. They have raised and donated a hundred and twenty thousand dollars wow. over the course yes right and keep in mind the first tournament they had just put 40 50 boats to go to this level in such a competitive area is remarkable be able to coordinate a tournament of this magnitude on an ongoing basis so now there there we have we have you in the competitive we have summer in, in the tournament now Another lady, uh, family is 100 years in the camp area. Uh, she is five foot one, still can win a hundred pounds, maybe. Okay. A very, very accomplished lady on the water. She has spent, um, years fishing. She, she ran party boats in the Tampa area. She is a single parent whose son just graduated last year from uh, South Florida. Um, family with ranching. She has been outdoors all her life. She's in Key Largo now, um, has a following. She does a blog uh, to show exactly how to rig a bait, how, how, to, how to, uh, to go ahead, fillet, uh, land, fight a fish, and so on. She did a 20-minute video on fighting... Uh, an amberjack that wound up being 40 pounds. All right. Um, listen to this 57,000 plus viewers view, oh, view that. Um, all right. So there is a, now she also went ahead and, um, obtained her charter boat captain's license. I believe they call it the six pack. Uh, that's done by many, many people. All the charter cats is that you see men and women, and so they have to do this in order to be licensed. But now she went one step further. She went through the course. She took the test. And according to an instructor who has taught this course for 28 years, she is only the third woman to take and pass, not the 100-ton vessel captain's license but the hundred ton master's license congratulations Three, wow. <laughs> to me That's that incredible. is incredible now let's take the three ladies that are just barely highlighted the common thing is this Pam with Summer and with oh with Angela uh oh. She is also known as the Florida Salty Cowgirl. She writes a, a blog underneath that name. Go to YouTube and, and, and watch her, her, uh, um, her postings and so on. Extremely interesting. Oh, plus she has designed her own lures that 
JCAM is proud to say that they do the manufacturing for it. But let's take all three women. They are strong. They are independent. They are knowledgeable. They are focused. And they have respect for themselves, for the areas in the, in, in the um, community, and for what they do. And they make a contribution. They ask nothing in return. These are role models that our children need to follow, that mm. men we need to recognize and support um, from fishing a kayak to running a tournament to being on the bridge of a hundred ton vessel. Right? Wow. Um, wow. Look at the accomplishments that have, have been done and all three need to be recognized. And um, to, to talk with Summer, or with Angela, uh, I think would your listeners would also be interested in uh, in hearing their stories. Um, but Peter, yeah, Peter, Go. you there? Can yes, you sir. get can you get a hold of either one of them? I think it'd be nice to have the three the three Pam and and Summer and I can't remember the other one. Uh, we'll have a we we'll spend a, you know one of our slots uh, having a, um, a roundtable discussion. I, I think we can do that. Uh, now, Summer uh, is um, going to be tied up until um, was her tournament is the uh, weekend after next, okay? So mm-hmm. she's going to be tied up with that. Um, but I will get a hold of Angela, our pal girl, right? <laughs> and uh, get get you the, her contact information. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll do the same with Summer. And yeah. this way, you, you could get get the three ladies all yeah. together. Yeah, I think it would be um, very interesting to, to hear from them. I, I think so, especially when you look at the diverse backgrounds that, they, that they're that uh, they participating in, uh, the areas. Um, um, they overlap in, in some areas and others, they're, um, they're, they're separate. But uh, it, it is, once again, uh, strong, independent women that are focused, and have a passion for what they do, and I, I think that's a, a rare, rare um, characteristic to find in, in uh, people, um, just in general. Well, you're you're, um, you're very kind. But, you can't see it, uh, but uh, I am blushing. You're very, very kind. Thank you for those words. Uh, um, I appreciate appreciate that. But you all deserve it. You all deserve it. Uh, when when you see dedication, hard work. Um, Pam, I know, I know you didn't get to be good at what you do or learn how to launch that, uh, kayak in the surf, um, over a weekend. I know Summer didn't go ahead and put that tournament together to accept that it is. I know that Angela did not go ahead and obtain the success she has, um, and, in, in obtaining the, the licenses, what she does on an ongoing basis, uh, the three of you, all right? Um, the, you, Rare commodities, rare commodities. I, I really think, I think it would be, I think it would be very interesting to have the three of them on and their perspectives. I, I and very much enjoy, Pam knows this, so it's not like I'm patting her on the back, I tell her all the time, and it's not, it's not, you know, blowing smoke at her. It's, I enjoy having her because she brings a unique perspective. Um, she's somebody who's literally on the, the water's level. And, uh, again, I, I, when I think of Pam, I think of this one particular picture that she sent me, a, a fish that's almost as big as a kayak she's in. She's holding onto this fish so somebody can take a picture of her before she releases it. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know a lot of guys that would do that. Um, so, you, you know, you said earlier, you mentioned she was brave and, uh, committed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it, uh, the other thing that you bring up that I, I, I'm so grateful for, these are role models. You know, we have so many women out there that are in front of the TV that less than honorable is the best way I can tell you. They're showing themselves in a less than honorable way. Here is something that's very honorable, something that is, my goodness, is, goes back in time. How far back do we go in time when fishing first started? Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do, and, and I'm very interested in doing it, uh, Peter. So you let me know. Meanwhile, uh, we're almost up against a break here. Before we go, I want to mention a couple of things about Peter. Peter makes handmade lures. They're you beautiful. can find him at jcamfishing.com. It's J C A M m fishing.com and uh, any parting thoughts before you go peter 
Uh, no, once again, I, I appreciate the fact that you allow me to have this time uh, with you, your audience, and so on. And also, I appreciate the ability to have... You are known by the people you associate with. Mm-hmm. I just named three people that uh, I'm associated with that make me a better person. And I thank oh. all three of them for that. Right? Well, so, thank you. You guys have a, a great day. Maybe this sun uh, will shine a little bit after a couple of days, and we can get back out on the water. Right? Yep. Take care now. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it, sir. Right. Okay, folks, right. we will be right back. We're up against a break. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip. You can find your tide reports, buoy reports, get a fishing license, and even find someone to go fishing with. Plus great products and services from all our media partners. And oh yeah, you can get the Fish Florida Show on the app. Sundays at 8 a.m. Eastern here on the WDBF Radio Networks. So download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip and tune in. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. This is a physical training event. Promises to one's community. Healthy people move to free out of their house. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of Battles Won. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. Not wor- I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer because that is such a scary word. St. Jude takes care of absolutely everything. And knowing that we don't have to pay for all of the medical expenses, that's huge. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude is uniquely positioned to advance the cures of pediatric cancer, I think better than any other institution in the world. The contributions make a big difference. Donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. We have the resources and we have the focus. And so if St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. My vehicle was sent six feet in the air in a ball of fire. I thought I was going to die. It uh, ripped my arm off. It broke my right femur. I took such a hard blow to the head that my retina was torn apart. Say a prayer for peace. I'm Trace Adkins. I want to tell you about these true American heroes and how you can show your thanks by helping them through Wounded Warrior Project. They reached out to us as a family, and they never forgot about us. The job of helping thousands of our wounded warriors rebuild their lives is massive and growing every day. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. 
Many of these service members suffer traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. They helped me basically put my life back together. If it wasn't for Wounded Warrior Project, I would be a statistic right now. I would have been one of those soldiers who came home and committed suicide. I'm in the fields of Vietnam, the mountains of Afghanistan. Your gift today of $19 a month can help us provide the programs and services desperately needed by our wounded service members. Call or go online with a pledge and you'll receive this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. Make that call now. Say a prayer for peace. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Okay, we are back. It is the Fish Florida Show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. And again, this morning we are suffering from a little bit of liquid sunshine. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is raining. Uh, we have um, regressed. We We were raining... Uh, mooses and cows a little while ago. I think we're down to puppies and kittens now. So, uh, very shortly, maybe the sun will break out and we'll see some of that sunshine. Uh, it is amazing to me, as long as I've lived here, how quickly things can change. In 10 minutes, it looks like it's the end of the world. And, uh, 15 minutes after that, it looks like it's bright sunshine and, uh, it's a brand new day. <laughs> so anyway, this morning, if you, if you're just tuning in, I have Pam Worth, one of the top female kayak anglers here in Florida with me as co-host. Thank you so much for being here, Pam. Good morning, sir, and thank you for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure to have you on, bring a unique perspective. And, uh, of course, we have Captain Hook back there in the background. He's taking care of all the goodies for me. Thank you, Captain Hook. All right. My pleasure, my friend. And, uh, you know, the, the next guest I have... Um, in my travels throughout uh, what I do, th- those of you who may not know... Um, uh, radio is not my full-time job. <laughs> I, uh, like many people, I, I have a full-time job, and that is uh, I go out and I work on people's um, uh, office equipment. That could be a laser printer, could be a copier, could be a fax, that kind of thing. And uh, so I meet some unique people from time to time, and one of them, uh, his name is Jay Lucas Lamar. Jay Lucas is a tax and accounting uh, specialist. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tax right. and accounting? Rascala, this is a fishing show. If this, I mean, when we I talk know, tax man, when we um, talk tax man, reason, we're talking sharks. Uh, that's okay because it's it's my end. I'm I'm getting a little um, lag on my end. The reason I wanted um, uh, Jay Lucas to come on is he has a very interesting story that I thought the listeners would be um, very interested in because uh, when I went to visit him, I saw a group of fishing rods uh, up in the corner and i looked at him and i said oh so you like to fish and uh, he gave me the look that um, once i saw the look i said oh my goodness he has something to say and and certainly he does so let me welcome him now good morning jay lucas and welcome to the fish florida show well good morning can you hear me okay uh you're a little weak a little weak (laughs) yeah boy i don't know uh i don't know what to do you're really bad Go ahead, Pam. No, I was saying you're fine. Come, yeah, you're fine. It's okay. Okay, good. Good. All right. Well, well yeah, good morning. Well, I wanted I wanted you to come on, like I'd mentioned to you, because you had a very interesting story. I felt it was a very interesting story about uh, some one of your relatives and uh, Hemingway. Let's go into that a little bit. Well, uh, it's <clears throat> it's a pretty long story, but yeah, my grandfather. Uh, was a very, very good friend, of, became a very good friend of Ernest Hemingway. Actually, as far as I know, he's responsible for bringing Hemingway into the fishing world, and I have the pictures to prove it, and those are the ones you saw up in my wall when I took you, <coughs> when I took you upstairs. Uh, my grandfather was the, what the, uh, his claimed inventor of the fighting chair, and of course that was documented by many people in the, the, the IGFA uh, 
uh, inducted me and uh, and all the history in the Fishing Hall of Fame in 2001. Wow. So he's an inductee with Ernest Hemingway, Michael Lerner, and so on and so forth. His list of inventions and accomplishments is so, so long that I can't really go into all of them. Uh, but anyhow, I got the induction to the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> I have the original pictures with him and learning on Hemingway, original pictures from the 1930-1935 up on my wall. I also have two pictures of the original uh, tuna cup, the shark cup that was actually, uh, they started fishing a world tournament in 1937 in Nova Scotia, and Julio won first place three years in a row, and then again in 1947. <clears throat> so... He invented the fighting chair, the, the, and it's a really, it's, it's a funny story because I wonder where in the world he came from. Well, uh, he was getting a haircut at the barbershop of the sugar mill in, in, <laughs> in, in Cuba, and, uh, yeah, and he jumped in the chair before his brother, and they got all upset, and they started to fight and started to pull him off, and he couldn't pull him off. So right then and there he goes, and this is all because of his damn footrest. So he built a chair being a civil engineer and a graduate of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York, where he went to school. He designed the chair, manned it on a boat, went back to Nova Scotia, and won the tournament. That, that's how he did it, to be very honest. How crazy is that, huh? An incredible <laughs> advantage. Incredible. <laughs> that's, that's exactly where he came from. It's nothing but a barber chair that had been invented, of course, way before fishing chairs, and it's all because of the footrest. He also, of course, removed the back. He invented the harness that we now call it kidney, but it was a shoulder harness. It was all leather, and it came over the top and around the belly, and he hooked up to the Fino reel. He was the first, the first field tester of Fino and was responsible for the improvement of the Fino reel. And, uh, and he worked with Fino for many years. He was responsible for the roller guys, the invention of the roller guys, mm. the banana bot, the, uh, the first tagging tournament and release was done by him in Nova Scotia where he would hook tunas with a silver hook with his name, address, and phone number and people would return it and he would log it. Uh, That's incredible. It, it, Isn't that amazing? Know, the stuff that he's done. He was the founder of the Road and Real Club, a member number one of the Road and Real Club, <laughs> and I have his member card wow. with me. He was also the founder of the Cat K Club and won the Cat K Club against Bill Carpenter and Mark Will Lerner about four times in a row. It's it's uh it's incredible. He invited Hemingway to come with him to go fishing in Cuba. Hemingway fell in love with Cuba. Uh, the first marlin that he ever caught, and I sent you the original article, which I still have, uh, with Hemingway was caught him in his boat in Pilar and Julio in, in the Willow Dean, and he caught that huge marlin that got apple cord. I don't know if you guys heard about that story, that the fish got eaten up by the sharks because he was drunk, and it took him... <laughs> Tommy Gunn started to shoot all the sharks away. Well, the more he shot, the more sharks came. And by the time he got to Bimini, there was nothing left. Old man and, in the sea. Uh, <laughs> so because of that experience that he had, he went to Cuba, got drunk again like he used to, and then he wrote The Old Man and the Sea, which really what happened to him, which is an old man that goes out and gets his finally got his huge fish and he never makes it back. Wow. And... And and now know. you now you know why I wanted him to come. That's an amazing <laughs> come on story. And share. I it's, love it's stories just behind incredible. stories. I could have sat all day listening to. And, and, and let me tell you, some people they make stuff up. He's not making any of this stuff. He showed me the pictures I've seen, and they're not copies. They're originals. You can look at them and see they're originals. I'm just like in amazement, and <laughs> it's just oh my goodness. I have, I have two World Cups that I turned one of them. I gave it to the IGFA. And, uh, and the other one is upstairs, the sharp cup. And, uh, I also, all the articles that have been written about him, I, I scanned them all and I put them in an email. So if you want to, you can put them up on the website. So all this is written down by the Florida Sportsman, by the Miami Herald. And the original, I also send you a copy of the original article in the Miami Herald where they say, Julio Sanchez just got a big, huge marlin, a thousand pounder, and they go, oh, no, it wasn't him, it was him, it was him. So they were fishing side by side, I think. Mm. Wow. And, and that's, that's a very condensed part of the story. I mean, the way he practiced when he was in the sugar mill, 
he tied an oxen with a harness, and he was in a cart, and then the oxen will pull, and then he tested all his finger and his tackle and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> the bull was pulling that way. That was incredible. That's I think... another story, and that's written, that's written in the Florida Sportsman article that I sent you. <laughs> I think it's amazing that the, 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 the fighting chair, as we know it, came about because of a fight in a barber chair. That's exactly where it came from. And that's documented on the Florida Sportsman, too, on the article. Yeah. And I didn't know any of this. I mean, I knew I had done some stuff, and I was, I had give up, gave up the accounting in a CPA firm years ago because I was addicted to fishing because he used to take me since I was a little boy. So I said, this, 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 this is not a job. This is ridiculous. I used to do everything by hand, and I was so, so tired of this stuff. And I used to be right next door to Bob Kleiser's tackle shop. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. It was a famous tackle shop in West Palm Beach. And it's not there anymore. So I used to go to the tackle store every day, you know, to at least find some relief at lunchtime. One day I quit, I bought a boat, took off, and then I went boating for 34 years. Wow. And I did all the I worked for Bert. I worked for Bert and Hatteras, and, uh, and I delivered, I don't know how many boats all over South America. I've been to Venezuela three times on a 28-foot Bertram alone. Wow. Wow. All around the Caribbean, I've done all the tournaments, all the shootouts. I came in second place on the on the Bertram Hatter shootout, but that's nothing compared to what he had done. It took me five years, and then I finally ran into Michael Lerno one day, the president of the IGFA. I said, "Listen, my name is Justo Lamar Sanchez. I'm the only living relative. Julio had no children. Mm. All the nephews are from his sister Maria Lamar or Maria Sanchez Lamar, which is my name." And uh, I met him, and I said, listen, Hemingway got inducted to the Hall of Fame. That guy didn't know how to fish. My <laughs> grandfather taught him everything. Uh, why did he get inducted to the Hall of Fame and not, not us? And uh, anyhow, so it took me five years of doing all this stuff, turning it over to the IGFA, and they sent me a letter, which I sent you a copy of the original letter, saying, okay, I'm sorry, you're getting the induction to the Hall of Fame. And I got it. Good job. Really? That's an incredible story. What a history. You should write a book. <laughs> I'm not a writer, <laughs> but anyhow, they, they've asked me to do that, but I don't know, you know, it is what it is, I, I, I don't know. I've written an awful lot, it took me five years of writing and writing and writing and collecting all the pictures and documenting all the stories. The hardest thing was to ascertain that he was the original, you know, inventor of, the, of what is known as a fighting tuna share. Sure, they had shares on boats, but they didn't have... <clears throat> the pedestal or the removable back or the harness. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Palm Beach Post and they interviewed uh, Mary Brothers and Rybovich. And I have another article that I didn't include where they both confessed that he was Julio Sanchez. So then I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so. That, the pres perseverance, well done. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it took me a while. So, yeah, well, when he came to fix my printer and he looked at my rods and said, oh, you like fishing. And I go, well, <laughs> fix the printer first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if you got the printer done, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> hey, hey, now, in all fairness, did I fix your printer? You're the best. Thank <laughs> God. I was getting ready to throw it away because I was so frustrated because I'm very mechanical. And I took it apart I don't know how many times. And it's, there's nothing like like hiring an expert. He came in, I said, you see this little wheel right here? And I go, gee, are you serious? <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> Jay Lucas, I want to tell you that I could probably spend all day listening to the stories, and that's why I wanted you to come on. When I first introduced you, um, you know, I'm sure people were going, oh, wait a minute, this is a tax and, and accountant guy. What is he doing? with fishing, but now that you've had the opportunity to share, they can understand why I wanted you on. And uh, I may even have you, ask you to come back if you've got some other stories you can share with us sometime in the future. We'll do it again because I'll tell you what, I was glued to every word that you said. It was amazing, truly amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you very much for inviting me, and have a great time. And yeah, we'll see, you, see each other again, hope, soon. Okay. Thank All you right. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Jay Lucas, Jay Lucas Lamar with... Uh, Lucas uh, Tax Solutions, we've got, we're up against a break, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't go away. Fish Florida Show. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. 
We'll be right back. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 9600 Hi folks, I'm Roger from Roger's Gotcha Motoring. If you need a local auto repair shop, Roger's Gotcha Motoring will take care of all of your automotive repair needs. If you need something as simple as an oil change or as complex as an engine overhaul, I have the latest in technology and the knowledge to get the job done right. We've been servicing Pinellas County since 1994 and are conveniently located at 3700 Fifth Avenue North in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need service, call now at 727-327-1830 or visit my website at www.rogersgotchamotoring.com or like my Facebook page at Rogers Gotcha Motoring for a complete list of all of our services. So come on over to Rogers, that's me, and get your car service today. And don't forget to shop and support local business. Call now to book your appointment at 727-327-1830. That's 727-327-1830. Or swing on by. K Pasa Mexican Cantina is where friends and neighbors come to connect, share, and celebrate one another in a festive, casual atmosphere. Offering rich, robust flavors of authentic Mexican cuisine, we use only the freshest, finest ingredients. We chop and dice, season and blend, and then cook everything we serve to perfection. One thing that makes Mexican food even better is one of our delicious Best of the Bay margaritas. Our signature series of margarita flavors range from our sweet and fruity mango and strawberry to our hot and juicy jalapeno margarita. Having a busy meeting, or getting together and looking for Mexican food? Try our Fast Facts form. It's an easy, fast way to order your favorite Mexican food. We have special platters and layouts for any occasion. The form is super easy to fill out. Fax, email, or just call it in. Whether it's here in the restaurant, in your home or office, at k Pasa, we celebrate bringing people together. k Pasa Mexican Cantina, 10478 Roosevelt Boulevard, North Street, in the Gateway Shopping Center, 727-330-3663 in St. Petersburg. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Hey, this is Captain Hook for Statewide Pest Control Services. They've been serving the west coast of Florida since 1987. Statewide does it all. Pest control, termites, lawns, mosquitoes, tent fumigations, etc. This announcement is from their mold division. Since Hurricane Charlie in 2004, all their personnel are certified in mold and moisture control. Their two-step services are guaranteed to get you back in your home quicker and, in most cases, paid by your insurance company. Give them a call at 877-488-7378. That's Statewide Pest Control Services for all your pest and mold control needs. Serving Florida from Pasco to Lee Counties. Statewide Pest Control Services, 877-488-7378. 877-488-7378. That's 877-488-7378. You're listening to WDBFRadio.com, a tune-in station. WDBFRadio.com
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Rizcola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now your host, Rizcola Stevens. And a very good morning to you out there. If you're just tuning in, it is the Fish Florida Show. And if you uh, uh, are missing anything that uh, we have already said this morning, you can always listen to us at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. We do rebroadcast at 3 p.m. The show. So anything that you've missed uh, between eight and nine o'clock this morning, you can always go back and listen to again. And uh, if you're not available, or if you want to tell one of your friends about one of the shows that uh, they weren't able to listen to live, uh, we do archive all of the shows. There is an archive set up um, at the fishfloridashow.com, the website www.fishfloridashow.com. We also have um, a YouTube channel which is called the Fish Florida Show. You can go there as well. So it gives you a couple of different opportunities um, if you've missed something and you want to go back and something that, you know, we did a special show last week about all about what's going on with the water. I think it's important for people to have knowledge in order to be able to look at the different things that we can do in hopes of resolving that. Go back and listen to that show because there's a tremendous amount of information there. We don't like to politicize anything. We don't ask you to vote for this guy or that guy. We just ask you to be informed so that when you make a decision, hopefully an educated decision is better in, uh, decision to make than an uninformed mm-hmm. decision. So anyway, um, one of the people that I so much enjoy having on is Miss Lisa. Lisa is with the uh, CCA Florida Star Tournament, and one of the reasons I enjoy having her on so much is She has a tournament that has one of the only um, divisions in it that I've ever heard of and I thought was absolutely amazing because I am a clean water freak. (laughs) And uh, so anyway, I'll let her tell you about that. Good morning, Miss Lisa. Well, good morning, Riscala. How are you? I am doing well. Oh, and I forgot. I apologize. Good morning, Miss Pam. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm here. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, um, so Miss Lisa, what's going on? Let's get uh, an update on what's happening. Yeah, we've got two days left of the star competition. You can still get registered and get out there in the Coast to Kick Plastic Division and pick up a five-gallon bucket full of garbage for your chance to win $1,500 cash. Or even if you're lucky enough to catch a tagged redfish, you can win either a brand-new GMC pickup truck, a brand-new Carolina skiff, cottonmouth boat, or a Hughes Redfisher. We've already given away the Contender and the Pathfinder, but there's still lots of prizes to be won. There's $100,000 in college scholarships. Um, There's just so much great stuff uh, with the star competition. You still can get registered at www.ccafloridastar.com. So that is a great initiative. But really, the reason I came on today, Rascala, is I wanted to remind everyone that from Anna Maria South, there, uh, down to Collier County, there is a temporary closure on the um, harvest of snook and redfish until September, I believe it is the 29th, when the FWC will revisit that temporary closure. Um, I also wanted to announce that Coastal Conservation Association Florida will be working with FWC, Moat Marine, and Duke Energy to do a restocking program in Southwest Florida over the next two years. Excellent. Um, so we will be very, very uh, involved in restocking the loss of our snook and redfish. We'll be releasing 10,000 snook in the Southwest Florida waters, as well as 10,000 redfish, and then 250 redfish that are breeder size reds. And um, we want to try very uh, effectively to reestablish the snook population and the redfish population that was lost. Wow. Well, I, I, you know, just till September, I I think they should close it for a year, just between you and me. Well, you know, that's something that's, Pam, that's something that's going to be readdressed here um, on September the 29th. And if we don't make our voices heard... um, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. We work very hard to get this temporary closure, um, and we have to work even harder um, with the research that they're finding to make sure that if that's what is necessary to um, get our fisheries back into good health along with clean water, then we need to do that. Um, I will tell you that um, we are working as diligently as we can on all the projects to improve the water quality 
uh, and also then all of the projects to um, reestablish snook and redfish. And eventually, uh, we will be able to get the the um, average angler involved. An angler can actually adopt a snook. Each snook will be uh, tagged with a pit tag, and an angler can follow their particular snook and know where they are, their growth patterns. Um, it's a great project. You can check it out on our website, ccaflorida.org. It'll be up and available as of next week, but we're just letting you know that we are involved and we are restocking snook and redfish in southwest Florida. Oh, thank you so much. Well, you are so welcome. And that is such a great I'm project. Um, I'm out in the woods right now. I'm shooting an archery tournament and very limited service. I hear myself going in and out. <laughs> So I appreciate you guys giving me the time this morning, and you have a wonderful day. Um, Please go check out CCA Florida Star. I'll get back with you next week, and we'll give you an update on when the tournament wraps up and who has won prizes. And I am so appreciative of all your support. Uh, We thank you for all you do, Lisa. I've got to tell you, you, Pam. I I am tickled. You know, the more that she tells me, the more. (laughs) How many thousand fish are we talking about? We're talking 10,000 snook and 10,000 redfish that are um, of fingerling size. And then we will have another 250 breeder reds that we will release in southwest Florida. Wow. When you say breeder reds, are you talking over slot? Oh, I think we lost her. She was out in the woods. Ooh. She's in an archery yeah. competition. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll come back. I'll text her and we'll follow up on that. Um, yeah. but I'm hoping they're over slot fish that people can't harvest when she's talking. That's amazing. Reds. Yeah. That's amazing. Constantly giving back. See, this is what I like. Constantly giving back to the community. The community helps them and they give back to the community. That's, to me and all the relationships that I've had, uh, when you have a relationship where both sides win, that's the best kind of relationship. And that's what I see here. Um, again, they have the, the only fishing tournament I've ever heard of that has a category for trash for Pete's sake. You have an opportunity to win money for picking up trash. Yeah. You're helping everybody else and helping yourself possibly win. <laughs> that's a handsome amount. What'd you say? 1500? Yep. Yep. And you know, <laughs> the other thing I like about it is, um, I try to, to fish as many, um, I call them CPR tournaments, catch, photograph, and release, because on the kill, the weigh-ins, I mean, you're, you're kind of stuck. Uh, I know that the IFA does a great job on their boat side is a weigh-in, but the anglers have to take care of those redfish, bring them in carefully, and bring them in alive, and release them. They release them back in good condition, and I wish more tournaments would be like that. Wow. Wow. 20,000 fish. Yeah. You know, the last couple of shows have been kind of, you know, I, I have to admit, I'll be honest, it's kind of dismal with what's going on. And with this introduction of this new information, sure, it brings a lot of hope. Uh, 20,000, I'm still getting over that number. That's, yeah. that's a lot of fish. Now, they're going to be, they're pretty much hatchlings, so it'll take them three, four, five years to get to a decent size. But still, it, it's it's seeding for tomorrow. It's seeding for the next generation of anglers right. out there. Right, yeah. It's, it's, I want, I know. Captain you know, Hook wants to adopt a fish. Me too. I can't wait till we get more information on that. I'm an adopting a fish. Mm. And, and not to take away from what they're saying or what she's doing, but it, it, you know, the old saying, it's better than nothing. This is a heck of a lot better than nothing because that's what I was seeing in my mind. I was, oh my gosh, look at this devastation that's going on. What are we doing? Nothing. And then she comes along and, and introduces that information. That's fantastic. Fantastic. I'm so grateful. It's, uh, it, I don't know if she, I guess we lost her, Captain Hook. Did yes, she, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We lost yeah. her. But I'll tell you, it's great. You know, you can adopt a fish and, and just think of all the pleasures of that. You know, you have a little pet and adopt a fish. <laughs> you don't have to walk a fish. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just great. And then, then see how it proceeds through its life. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, and, and, I, I'm, I'm telling you that that really brought a smile to my face when she's yeah. saying all of these. These that's why I wanted to say it twice. I want to make sure I heard it right because again, I'm, my internet is a little wacky this morning, so everything comes in and out. So I miss a little bit here and there. But I thought she said ten thousand and ten thousand. That's why I wanted to say it again. Yeah. Twenty thousand to me. That's a pretty big number. That's a, quite a few fish. 
And annual membership is not very expensive. I am a life member. I, I believe in what they're doing. Are they perfect? I don't think there's any organization out there that's perfect. But they're yeah. all hardworking men and women. They really want the uh, the fishery to do well. That is their goal. I love it. And, and um, you know, again, I, one of the main reasons I like having her come on, how many, I don't know that there is any other fishing tournament I've ever heard of that would give you the possibility of winning a handsome amount of money for doing nothing more than picking up trash. That, it, to me, is amazing. That shows me their, where their heart is. Their mm-hmm. heart is, let's get this junk out of the water, and we'll pay somebody, you know, if they win, we'll pay somebody a handsome amount for that. That's, you know, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And um and and they're looking at tomorrow's generation of anglers too. The uh, money that they have in scholarship, one hundred fifty thousand, did she say? In tuition scholarship for youth. Oh yeah, yeah. And how many how many tournaments have you ever heard of that does anything like that? Yeah, and the youth entry is free. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. I think the youth entry, either the youth membership or the youth entry is free. And sorry, Lisa will probably shoot me on that for not having clarification. <laughs> but like, go um, to the website. Yeah. Go to the website. And yeah. Find out. Go to CCA, you guys. It'll take you just a second. But a uh, great organization. They, they're they in there building habitats also. They're working on reef, rest, you know, restoration. Uh, and great organization throughout the whole Gulf, both sides of Florida and around through the Gulf. And I think it goes up to Carolina, too. All the way up to Carolina? Yeah, not the Florida one, but they each have their own state chapter. Oh, oh, oh. But wow. C- CCA itself has different organizations in, you know, all the coastal states, at least I know around the Gulf and up to, I believe, Carolina. Mm-hmm. Well, again, it's always a to me, it's always a pleasure to deal with somebody um, that is, you can see the selflessness that is in their heart. Um, you know, I, you know, I asked you before, I don't know that you answered me. Have you ever heard of a tournament where you get paid to pick up trash? No, not <laughs> yeah, at all. Honestly, not at all. I've never heard of anything like that. And to you, me, that says that's a, a whole big ocean load of information for me. You know, and tra- how many people you know are going to pay you to pick up trash? And trash is easy to catch. You know? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of us. I know a lot of the yackers out there. If, if something's floating in the water, as you said, we're we're you know right at that angle. Um, we'll turn around and pick it up. I I keep a, a little container on my yak, and anytime I see stuff that I can reach and you know get it out of the mangroves, do that and uh, throw it out back when we get back to the launch. I mean, you know, it's we should we really should be thinking about that without the idea, oh, well, I could win money. Just thinking about it with the idea that, well, I'm just doing my little part to help clean up. And then to those who are, I want to use the word irresponsible over the air, but um, throwing this stuff into the water. Come on, let's let's wake up and stop doing that. Everybody, when you're out there on the water, you should have some kind of a container. You're at the beach, some kind of a container. To put your trash in because you always, uh, you know, it's not, nobody guarantee, especially if you're on the beach, there's no guarantee you're going to find a trash can right where you're at. So bring something with you. Um, and, and really, and this is just common sense for everybody. Everybody wins. And that's what I love. When everybody wins, that's my kind of deal. Mm-hmm. I keep one of those little uh, scalp nets that they use for scalping. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, it's out of the way. It's not big. It's, you know, it, it's perfect. Yeah. So everybody, you know, when we, when we can make it so everybody wins, that's that's my deal. And, and that's again, that's why I like this kind of thing. Now, I think it is the turn. I guess the tournament is over now. Uh, it, it ends in the next couple of days. I think there's like two, three days left before it ends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then do you know when it starts up again? It'll be next summer. It's a summer long tournament. Uh, it's it goes from basically from holiday to holiday. So it goes from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And it's done that way. It's like some tournaments, even other web type tournaments or uh, online tournaments, you only have one or two weekends to fish. This is the whole summer. You can fish at your leisure. Uh, every single fish that you catch qualifies for some different, um, category. And it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I, you know, I wish we had some stuff like that when I was a kid because I could have used fifteen hundred bucks. Boy, I could have done a lot of that. 
<laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, I was of the mindset, uh, keep the scholarship, give me the money. <laughs> Show me the money. Well, when you were a kid, the $1,500 would be like 15000 now. <laughs> yeah, that's Ooh, true. Ouch. It's, <laughs> snap. That's true. All right. Well, I can see that we're we're going up against a break, so let's go ahead and we'll take this break. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Fish Florida Show. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip. You can find your tide reports, buoy reports, get a fishing license, and even find someone to go fishing with. Plus great products and services from all our media partners. And oh yeah, you can get the Fish Florida show on the app. Sundays at 8 a.m. Eastern here on the WDBF radio networks. So download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip and tune in. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. This is a physical training event. Promises to one's community. Healthy people move to free out of their house. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of Battles Won. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. Not wor- I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out, look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer because that is such a scary word. St. Jude takes care of absolutely everything. And knowing that we don't have to pay for all of the medical expenses, that's huge. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude is uniquely positioned to advance the cures of pediatric cancer, I think better than any other institution in the world. The contributions make a big difference. Donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. We have the resources and we have the focus. And so if St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. My vehicle was sent six feet in the air in a ball of fire. I thought I was going to die. It uh, ripped my arm off. It broke my right femur. I took such a hard blow to the head that my retina was torn apart. Say a prayer for peace. I'm Trace Adkins. I want to tell you about these true American heroes and how you can show your thanks by helping them through Wounded Warrior Project. They reached out to us as a family, and they never forgot about us. The job of helping thousands of our wounded warriors rebuild their lives is massive and growing every day. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Many of these service members suffer traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. They helped me basically put my life back together. If it wasn't for Wounded Warrior Project, I would be a statistic right now. I would have been one of those soldiers who came home and committed suicide. 
gift today of $19 a month can help us provide the programs and services desperately needed by our wounded service members. Call or go online with a pledge and you'll receive this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. Make that call now. Say a prayer for peace. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Ritzcala Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Ritzcala Stevens. And we are back, and a very good morning to you if you're just joining us. It is the Fish Florida Show. We are uh, experiencing a little bit of what we call liquid sunshine here on the East Coast, a little bit of rain here and there. And uh, But all in all, I think it's going to be, if you don't get out there and enjoy the bits and pieces of the sunshine, you're going to be uh, sorry, because I think as uh, the day goes on, uh, it's supposed to get a little worse. <laughs> no, you don't want to hear that, but that, I think it's supposed to get a little uh, heavier with the rain as the day goes on and possibly into tomorrow as well. So if you're just tuning in, I have my co-host, the one and only Pam Worth. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I am just very happy this morning that uh, we are able to at least be on the air because uh, last night the internet had gone down several times and of course I had mentioned a couple of times this morning uh, very limited on my internet connection so uh, I'm grateful that we're able to do the show this morning because it would really upset me <laughs> to say the least that uh, if we had to cancel so I'm grateful for that and of course I'm very grateful for the one and only Captain Hook in the background doing his thing and answering the phones and putting everybody in hold and taking care of all of the other things that happen in the background. Thank you for that, sir. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. We're having a great show this morning. Things are going pretty smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, the only thing on my end is it breaks up every now and then. Again, that's because of the, the uh, internet connection. I'm, my bandwidth is extremely limited this morning. But again, I'm very grateful. We're able to do this. And uh, and I'm grateful for those of you on the other end of the microphone who, who uh, decide to make a uh, spend some time with us in the morning because uh, I know there's other things that you could possibly be doing, but uh, you make a decision to spend that time with us, and I'm very, very eternally grateful for that. Um, had a couple of very interesting guests this morning, huh? Especially with the uh, Jay Lucas. <laughs> Absolutely, he, he was he that that was the most interesting conversation. Uh, maybe yeah, you're right. Maybe we can get him with uh, Robert from the Florida Fisherman's Magazine and get an article on yeah. that. That would be fascinating. And the photos yeah, behind I, it would be intriguing. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. I will do that. I'll get a hold of him. And uh, I'm sure he's got some stuff already written up. He can just send it right over to him. Yeah. That was Captain Hook's idea. I can't take credit for that one. Mm. Um, oh, my goodness. I, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, I was going to say uh, about the uh, uh, Florida Fisherman magazine. Um, you know, they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can submit different articles and pictures to them, and if they approve it, they'll put it in the magazine for you. So if you've got stuff for them that uh, you want to share, you can always send it to them. You can reach uh, Robert on Facebook, Robert Warner on Facebook, and uh, he'll steer you to the right, um, in the right direction. And I think it's uh, F. F F F L L. Oh my! I just can't remember what it is right now. Normally, I can spit it right out, um, but it's a Florida Fisherman magazine. You can always look it up online, and you can submit electronically as well. And uh, have your have your little thing be put online. It's it's just really cool. I mean, it's great when people share uh, wonderful things, all kinds of stuff, different fishing experiences. Always um, interesting for me to listen to to uh, read about and and some of these videos to watch. No, I agree. I agree. Um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting magazine. Uh, I always find something new and I learn something from it each time, even if it's a little technique, anything to make you a better angler and understand what the rest of the state is doing. If I'm not mistaken, Pam, you work at a, um, uh, like a tackle store, right? Yes, I do. I work at Tampa Fishing Outfitters. Uh, it has, uh, two sister sh- stores, one in St. Pete and one in Tarpon. 
Uh, you know, in this day and age of, uh, we've all seen it, some of the big box stores collapsing and mm-hmm. shrinkage and falling into one another. Our growth this year is one of the best ever. And it's excellent. Yeah. It's everybody in the shop is either a tournament angler or a captain. We're all out on the water. We're all, some of us specialize in live bait. Some like myself specialize in artificial bait, but, uh, it's one to one. And you have some sponsors, right? You have sponsors that uh, provide you with a wide variety of hardware for your uh, tournaments, right? Who who are some of your sponsors? Well, my favorite, not my favorite, but my first is Native Watercraft. It's the kayak I use. I love it. Uh, they have a lot of, they have a number of different styles to suit from uh, river fishing to flats fishing to lake and bass to uh, offshore. Uh, excellent boat. You can either paddle it or you can pedal it. Uh, it's a bicycle type action that turns a prop. Uh, my rods are made in America. They're Cajun custom rods out of Jacksonville. Extremely strong and some of the lightest weight rods you're going to find out there. The gentleman that owns it is retired special services and a structural engineer. So, uh, and they make rods for a lot of other companies that I'm not allowed to mention. So, uh, I, you know, I was, sorry? I was rather surprised when you told me how stable it, and, I, and the evidence of that is I keep thinking of this picture, this one particular <laughs> picture. You know which one I'm talking the about. The sailfish. You, you got a hold of this thing, and it doesn't even appear that the kayak is tilted, no, right? Was it? No, it's, it's a very, very stable. What happened to me last weekend is uh, we were crossing a sandbar that is a brand new sandbar. Hadn't seen it there before. And we had a number of breakers just due to the weather system that was coming through. And I made it through six. And um, these are these are waves that are breaking, you know, crashing and breaking. Mm-hmm. And wow. I thought I'd made it over the bar and kind of relaxed for a second, and which you shouldn't do. You should always pay attention to your surroundings. And the seventh one got me. <laughs> I was slightly, you know, off balance. And... Uh, it it rolled me, which is, you know, I had everything tied down. In your mind, you you say, okay, what's going to happen if? And I wasn't fishing alone. There was three other guys there. And, uh, you know, it, it's very, very stable. They have a bigger boat called the Titan that's even wider. And the bass guys love it. Uh, so do the fly fishermen. You can stand, eat, I can stand in mine, but this one is even more of a stable platform. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's well, I, it, it is it, it is uh, very very impressive how how stable that thing is. Um, I think Captain Hook, you want to you have something you want to mention this morning, sir? Yeah, well, after the show that we did last week, you know, it was uh, it was very disheartening to um, listen to all the gloom and doom and stuff. But after the election, we were kind of wondering what was going to happen with uh, who was going to be elected and who was going to be on the right side of uh, doing something about the water and stuff. And if, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, there's several of the um, big-time news people like Brett Baer, um, uh, Brett Hume, uh, Sean Hannity and stuff have houses down in Boca Grande and Naples and Cape Coral. And so they're they're pretty much aware of what's going on because they vacation down here, and some of them live down here full-time. And uh, they had uh, Ron DeSantis on the other day, and this is, uh, ju- I just want to play this piece of, um, of Sean Hannity uh, remarking about his house down there in uh, uh, the Fort Myers area. But, you know, having a little place down in southwest Florida, uh, this red tide has become a big deal. It's not the first time that this has happened. And uh, I know you're active and involved in trying to find the proper balance and solution. Uh, how do you deal with it? Well, so red tide itself naturally occurs. It's been happening for, for a century or more. Um, but what happens is when the Army Corps of Engineers discharges polluted water out of Lake Okeechobee in the center uh, of part of our state into the Caloosahatchee River, you know, all that polluted water ends up mixing with the red tide, and that makes it really, really toxic, and that's what we've seen. So I'm going to be working with the Trump administration to get the federal match for this big reservoir we're going to build that you can clean the water, send it to the Everglades, and you're not putting this water in Florida's rivers. So I'll get that done. It's very, very important because what happens, Sean, with the red tide is you have so many segments of our economy 
uh, that is affected by that. You know, our fishermen, you know, our boaters, tourism, real estate, it, it really runs the gamut. So we've got to deal with it and we will deal with it. And Governor Scott, you know, he was able to push through this reservoir for the state proportion, which was good. We're now going to get the federal portion, the president's supportive of it, Mick Mulvaney's supportive of it. So we're going to pass that this year. And as governor, I'm going to work to get that implemented. And what I thought that was very good news. I just wanted to put in some good part. You know, Trump lives here in Florida himself, and where they're dumping the water out on the East Coast is not far from where the Mar-a-Lago is. And um, this is just going to be a matter of time before it gets worse and worse. But the, sure. it was very, very promising to realize that Trump's on board with this and they're going to get it done. It's not going to happen overnight. It's probably going to take a couple of years, but at least they're heading in the right direction. I think, I think honestly, I think it's going to take a lot of years. But with, again, with what I heard this morning, maybe that could be cut way down. Um, but it, you know, it's like we, it's like you're in a fight and somebody hits you, gives you a hard left. Now we're getting a hard right. You know, it's, it's, it's just illogical to me. Um, and I, I again, I guess there's a lot of, pol- I, I'm not very fluent in this subject, uh, to be honest with you. I just know what I've read over the last several weeks, maybe a couple of months at the most. And it's not pretty. It really isn't. There's so many people's hands are involved in this. So one guy wants to point at one guy, another guy wants to point at another guy. And, and the truth of the matter is, it's all of, all of them. And, uh, we need to get some cooperation. And I, honestly, I think the only way we'll ever get anywhere uh, really make some forward progress is for the people themselves to speak up because our silence is really kind of a way of a, a twisted way, but it's kind of a way of accepting everything. I don't want to accept what's going on. I don't like what it really hurts me. I, I was in tears. Honestly, I know some guys out there go, Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. I was, it broke my heart to see these manatees, these turtles, uh, a whale shark, um, thou- tons of fish washing up. God knows how many are on the, on the bottom of the ocean. It's, it's just not fair to the other inhabitants of the planet that we share this, you know, these grounds with. And it's not responsible of us. You yeah. know, we know better. We should be doing better. The- and because we've been silent, this is the result of that. So, I mean, that was the reason I wanted to do the show last. I, I, I don't like talking about it. It's a very depressing kind of thing. But then I hear from Lisa this morning who tells me she got 20,000 fish. My goodness. You know, so there are positive aspects that are happening, and I want to reinforce that there are things that are positive that are happening, and they will continue to happen, but they will only ha- continue to happen with the support of the people. I think that's the important part of all of this: the support of the people, supporting the right things. We'll get this stuff done. It'll take a little while, like Captain Hook said. I believe that, um, but we can get it done uh, if we work together. It's amazing what we can get done. Yeah, the old Simon and Garfunkel song, The Sound of Silence. Mm, Silence is deadly. Exactly. I mean, look what happened during different wars. And I'm getting a little off track. But people people didn't say anything. They didn't say, look what's going on. Look at the devastation. I mean, when yeah. you see it, you've got to speak up. Don't Don't be afraid. Speak up. Get involved. It's for everybody. I mean, again, we're back to what I said earlier. Everybody wins. So in my mind, that is so logical. I can't wrap my mind around why anybody would want it any other way. You know, again, so it is what it is. I I hope people will take it seriously because we are, our bodies are, I can't tell you, it depends on who you ask, 60 to 80% water. We start corrupting all the water around us. What? going to happen to your bodies you know that's why i said it this is for everybody this Mm -hmm. isn't just us down here in south florida on the west coast or on the east coast and and from what i understand there's some weird stuff going on up in the panhandle right a bunch of stuff uh, happening up there now i heard a little bit with all the water that's coming down uh, a little bit from the mississippi but i don't have a lot of facts on that i'll try to look that up and get that back to you yeah, I, I don't know that it's related to what's going on down here, or maybe related. I don't, who knows? But you know, we've got to be better stewards of of the land that that provides us a place to live. My goodness, it just doesn't. You know, again, it's just logical. Just, yeah. just you know, I get why I go back to CCA Florida. They're going to give you an opportunity. Of course, we should all be responsible enough, even without the uh, idea of you might make some money, but. 
an incentive to continue to help clean the water. Pick up some plastic, get a five-gallon bucket, join the CCA. And I wasn't aware that uh, some of it is free for the younger children. Hey, <laughs> could you imagine your child, you enter your child, and he's out on the boat with you, and I guess they, this would be acceptable. He's on the boat with you or she's on the boat with you, and um, you fill that five-gallon bucket, and s- somewhere along the line, they pick that child's name. Oh, my goodness, you know. Yeah. So you've helped clean the water for everybody else, and you've made a handsome amount on the side well, for doing not, nothing more than helping everybody else. But not only that, what I love about the CCA tournament is also it's subliminally, it's instructing children and adults good conservation it's a cpr catch photograph and release it's hey if you're out in the water pick up the trash that you see throw it in the bucket and when the bucket's full send us a picture and you're entered that that is amazing that in itself i think is amazing teaching our children (laughs) and even anglers that are out there today teaching them to be responsible don't point the figure at somebody else and say oh he can do it do it yourself I mean, that's what made America great is all of us stood up and we did stuff ourselves. We didn't wait for somebody else and a handout. We just knuckled down and got it done. And And everybody wins. That's the beauty of it. Everybody wins. Okay, I see it's that magic time again. Please don't go away. It is the Fish Florida Show, and we will be right back. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Roger's Got Your Motoring. If you need a local auto repair shop, Roger's Got Your Motoring will take care of all of your automotive repair needs. If you need something as simple as an oil change or as complex as an engine overhaul, I have the latest in technology and the knowledge to get the job done right. We've been servicing Pinellas County since 1994 and are conveniently located at 3700 Fifth Avenue North in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need service, call now at 727-327-1830 or visit my website at www.rogersgotchamotoring.com or like my Facebook page at Rogers Gotcha Motoring for a complete list of all of our services. So come on over to Rogers, that's me, and get your car service today. And don't forget to shop and support local business. Call now to book your appointment at 727-327-1830. That's 727-327-1830. Or swing on by. K Pasa Mexican Cantina is where friends and neighbors come to connect, share, and celebrate one another in a festive, casual atmosphere. Offering rich, robust flavors of authentic Mexican cuisine, we use only the freshest, finest ingredients. We chop and dice, season and blend, and then cook everything we serve to perfection. One thing that makes Mexican food even better is one of our delicious Best of the Bay margaritas. Our signature series of margarita flavors range from our sweet and fruity mango and strawberry to our hot and juicy jalapeno margarita. Having a busy meeting, or getting together and looking for Mexican food? Try our Fast Facts form. It's an easy, fast way to order your favorite Mexican food. We have special platters and layouts for any occasion. The form is super easy to fill out. Fax, email, or just call it in. Whether it's here in the restaurant, in your home or office, at k Pasa, we celebrate bringing people together. k Pasa Mexican Cantina, 10478 Roosevelt Boulevard, North Street, in the Gateway Shopping Center, 727-330-3663 in St. Petersburg. It 
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Rizcola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Rizcola Stevens. Yeah, we are here. Hey, I'm here in the uh, intro in the background. Well, we can pull that out. I was sitting here talking to uh, Pam about a couple of things, and I don't know. Did we already run through the intro once? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay. I'll blame it on Pam right. again. No, Let's no, just blame it on, on Pam. Today, um, Okay, <laughs> kind of threw me for a curve there. So uh, we are back. It is a Fish Florida show. If you've missed anything, we do replay the show at 3 p.m. And for those of you who can't sleep early in the morning, I believe it's around 4 a.m., uh, we replay the show as well. And uh, if it's neither one of those fits your schedule, we do have archives set up. You can find them on www.fishfloridashow.com. You can also go to the Fish Florida Show uh, page on Facebook and give us a like. That would be great. Uh, and you can also find us on YouTube, Fish Florida Show on YouTube. So this morning I have uh, Pam Worth, who is one of the top female kayak anglers here in Florida with me. Always a pleasure to have her. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you. And, of course, Captain Hook, you heard him in the background. Old double intro hook over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had some very interesting guests this morning. Um, again, if you've missed it, you can always hear it again. And uh, another interesting guest that I always enjoy having on is Mike Simcoe with KiteFishing.com. He always has some unique thing to share with me. And, uh, you know, like I've said many times, I don't pretend to be a professional at any of this, but I do – uh, will admit, I always learn something, and it's and that's why I enjoy having these uh, guests on. Is this morning? If you didn't learn anything this morning, you weren't listening, <laughs> because there was a whole lot that went on this morning. Anyway, good morning, Mike, and uh, welcome to the Fish Florida Show, my friend. Hey, thanks, Miss Gala. How are you? Doing well. Doing great. Thanks. How how about an uh, an update? Have you been doing any fishing? Oh yeah, we've been. We've been doing some fishing, you know, it's, um, you know, we're uh, closing out the full moon in August. So, um, the Wahoo bite in Southeast Florida has been excellent, excellent. So, uh, the last couple weekends and, um, started in there during the week, we've been catching Wahoo one, two, three a day, um, every time we go. And it's been a fantastic, uh, fantastic summer for that. Now, how are you setting up to catch Wahoo? Can you kind of explain a little bit of what sets you're using or what baits? Sure. Um, you know, I, I fish generally, if I'm on the boat, we just do a three, a three line spread. And I love to catch these things with really light tackle. So we use a, a breakaway rubber band system off of planers that we run off of the cleats, the stern cleats. Mm-hmm. So on the port and starboard side of the boat, um, I always keep it simple. So left, you know, when I'm looking at the Looking at the transom, left is long. So I have a, a number 32 planer that I set up on 600-pound mono. The left side is a 60-foot-long run of that. Um, on the right port side, I will put um, 30 feet, so basically half. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> I'll run. I use spinning tackle, so we have, uh, you know, I use Saragossa 20,000 spinning reels mm-hmm. on uh, Travala rods. Nice. And that's 65 pound braid. So I use 65 pound braid loaded up in a hundred feet of what I'll call a shock leader. It's usually fluorocarbon, um, 120 pound test. So anyways, on my left side, which I run long, once I get past that hundred foot of fluorocarbon, I count, I do a 10 second count while the boat's more or less running at trolling speed. I'll do a 10 second count on that one. On the right side, I get past my hundred feet of shock and I do a five count so it's a little shorter and then shotgun which is on a, on a trolling lead like a 24 ounce trolling lead and another 50 feet of shock from the lead to our bait that one runs long shotgun so that one is always about I I would tell you it's 150 yards if anything mm-hmm. back 
And so those are my three. And I mix up the colors. I usually do, I usually do a dark, like a black on black kind of a. Uh, we, I use J Cam lures. Mm-hmm. It's a five ounce head with a black nylon skirt over a horse ballyhoo, and then on my long my long planer bait, I'll do maybe pink and pink and white, and then on my long shotgun, it will be a blue and white. Same thing, horse ballyhoo. I I feel like bigger. Bigger profile is better, mm-hmm. and especially when you're in the dark, because we start we'll start trolling at about five fifteen in the morning, and the minute I get a bite, um, we're a little crazy about this. So the minute we get a bite and figure out that okay, the pink pink and white got bit, I switch everything to pink and white. <laughs> yep. oh, that makes so sense. That's our yeah, that's our trick. And I mean, if the black on black gets hit or black and purple, everything goes that way. So you know, we always go with loaded with a bunch of new new lure heads and multicolors and figure out what they like. Mike, what speed are you trolling at? Um, so we have a pretty heavy current. You know, our Gulf Stream current here can run uh, pretty pretty quick. So what I do is I just try to find that speed. So like when we're putting the bait in the water beside the boat, I just try to find that speed. Um, and usually I set my baits heading south, so right into the current. That's the worst condition, right? So, mm-hmm. so if you're going three knots over ground and that current's ripping five knots, you know, we've got a net eight knots, um, affecting the bait. So I'll figure that out on the way south. And so I would tell you that on average, we're doing between three and five knots headed south. And then when you turn back to the north, depending upon the current, we could be going as quick as 11 knots. Wow. But you know, it's not stressing the bait. It doesn't stress that bait because, you know, obviously it's pushing you that way. Right. Huh. That's so amazing. That's, that's the kind of variable there. Now, I have another question. You're probably going to think it's a, a stupid question, but we were talking about the planers I know are real easy to pop off your line. But when you use the uh, trailing weight, I think, would you say, I forgot how many ounces you said. The one in the middle? Yeah, 24. Okay. 24. Yep. Okay. Do you hand line once that weight hits the tip of your rod? Do you hand line the rest of it in? Yeah, that's kind of the dance, you know, in the cockpit. So what will happen is once you get a fish on that, um, I find that, you know, it really pays to have an experienced angler um, bringing that fish to the boat because here's what happens. You get that weight within, you know, let's say there's a section of lead, there's a section of wire that comes off of these Mm-hmm. Throwing weights because right. Wahoo sometimes will eat those weights. All right, so let's say that's two feet um, right off the rod tip. I want the angler to move. He moves forward in the boat, and he really keeps that rod kind of angled off off of the boat, over the covering board, mm-hmm. away from the mate. And yes, the mate does handline that fish in. Wow! So if the fish does, if the fish digs his head in in the water again and starts to to run. I really want that angler to be able to keep all that mess away from the mate, you know, because it can be chaos. Oh. We've had, you know, over 30 years of doing this, we've had a couple accidents where that thing comes flying away and, you know, you just don't want somebody getting hurt. Right. So, yes, it's hand li- we hand line that way then. That's the, that's the trick. Okay. With me and the kayak, you're going to laugh. Um, I put on what I call a poor man's uh, deep rigger or down rigger. <laughs> And I used to wait and right. I'll put it on, I'll tie it on with a rubber band. So when I get to that point, it's just clip <laughs> with the scissors and yeah. I can reel the rest yeah. of it in. <laughs> well, I do that. I'll tell you what, I use that all the time, that technique often. Um, we do it, I kind of call it a knocker. So, you know, what will happen is what you've got, if you put that weight on your line and then let's just say you put a rubber band in front of that weight to lock it in place, then when the fish, you get that weight to the rod tip, you can just keep winding and, and move that weight right down to your, to basically your first swivel. I, I put it, I so, don't use the rubber band behind it. I actually loop it through and, and tie it on with the rubber band. So I just cut the rubber band yeah. and then reel it in. So it's not sliding on the line. Works, works perfect. A so silly, silly kayaker girl <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> no, no, that's great. You know, if it works, it's brilliant. <laughs> hey, I, I have a silly question for you, Pam. Uh-huh. Have, have you ever fished using a kite on, mm-hmm. on the kayak? No, Bobby does it a lot. He's a, a yak rat. Um, I, 
I would love to learn how to do that, but I have not done it yet. Kite so fishing is have, amazing. People have done it. Oh, yeah. Bobby takes six rods out, of which one is a kite rod. Wow. <laughs> so, Pam, Pam yes, one, of the, uh, one of the recommendations I'd have if you get into that is, you know, look online for a kite called a Boston Big Game Kite. Boston Big Game um, Kite. Yeah, so it's it, what's unique about that kite is it flies in, in almost any wind. I mean, from six six miles an hour up to 35 miles an hour. It's really a multi-use kite. But the thing is, you don't have to assemble it. It just rolls up. You roll it up. You can, you know, if you ever have you ever seen those uh, sunshades that go on the the windshield of your you know car to protect the, uh-huh. the heat. You know, it kind of it kind of just like folds up like that into like a nothing little a little handful of nice. rip stop material. But then when you undo it, it all springs into action, and the wind is what keeps it keeps it kind of taut. Um, so it doesn't take up any space for the kayak. Mm-hmm. It's waterproof. So if it gets wet, you shake it off. You can fly it again right right away. It's just an excellent little. It's an excellent little kite for multi use. I will look into it. I do know that Bobby is is very sophisticated, and he's using the helium balloons behind the kites and everything. Mm. Oh yeah, so he's getting all. Into, he's got everything going. But yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that that. Boston big game kite. I'll tell you, when I'm out there, particularly when I'm by myself, mm-hmm. and I just don't want to go through the whole. I don't want to go through the whole operation, and I just want to get a kite up and a bait on the surface. The big game kite, Boston big game kite, is excellent. Thanks, and and just for listeners that may have tuned in and don't understand why somebody would use a kite, I think you hinted on it that it keeps it on the surface. What are you usually targeting when you're kite fishing? Well, it just targets any predator that's that's in the area that you're fishing and it, it triggers by suspending a bait, a live bait from the kite and it's struggling on the surface, you know, creating all that action on the, on the water surface. It triggers a predatory response from really any fish that's in the area that's hungry. So, you know, fish that we've caught on the kite, this is going to sound crazy, but we've caught everything from tarpon, kingfish, wahoo, dolphin, um, sailfish, of course, had blue marlin eat kite baits. Um, yes. Amberjack would come up off the bottom. Grouper, you know, anything that can t- kind of sense that there's the struggling bait will come up and, and attack. And the and the by the way, the you know the action is insane to see because you know they come out a lot of times they launch out of the water. Had a Goliath grouper come out of the water on a bait. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it just it triggers that predatory response in the best way I can well, say. That's amazing. Now, see, I, I find that interesting. Uh, a grouper would come up from the bottom because I guess what is it vibrations it sends out? Well, you know these fish. I mean, it's a it's a amaz- it's always amazing to me. For example, like have you ever trolled? Have you ever been trolling and then seen a dolphin come? You know, porpoising from what seems like 150 yards away. And it's just literally coming at the spread, the, the trolling spread. So I know they can sense these. They sense action and sense, you know, maybe the light, the shimmers from, from many, many feet away. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me they'll come off the bottom. That's wow. intriguing. That's really cool. But I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to try it out. You're Where are you located? You're I'm the- uh, in North Palm Beach, right north of West Palm Beach in Southeast Florida. Okay, well, I, I think I'm going to charter you and uh, get a lesson on kite flying 101. I'll, I'll get some video <laughs> for you because you, you, I'm like I love Lucy on the water. So, Riscal, <laughs> I'll get some video and you can see Crazy Pam. Yeah. Mike, I want to thank you for calling in, my friend. We're running out of time. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to call in and share. Share very specific information. I found it very interesting. God bless you, my friend. Enjoy the weekend and enjoy the holiday coming up. Uh, and uh, thanks again for calling in. Soon I have you back on. Thank you all. Appreciate it. See you. That, that is Mike Simcoe. He is with kitefishing.com. You can find him online. And he's one of those people who doesn't mind sharing. And, and that's what I like about him. Uh, again, selfless kind of thing. So you've been listening to the Fish Florida show, uh, with, uh, Riscala and of course the one and only Pam Worth and in the background back there, Captain Hook. We hope that uh, you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you again in a week. And so long. <laughs> <laughs>